Hello, this is Changren. I'm a solution architect at TigerGraph, and today I'm going to talk about training graph convolutional neural networks in a graph database. And here is the outline for today's session. I know there is a mix of audience here. There may be some graph experts that may not be very familiar with machine learning. So first, I will briefly talk about how GCN works. And then I'm going to talk about uh, why you want to train your graph convolutional neural network in graph database and how to do that. And lastly, I'm going to give you a demo of using Tiger Graph to train a GCN for paper classification in a citation graph. So first, let's take a look at a very classical machine learning problem, classification. So in this example, we are given an journal paper and we want to classify this paper. So we want to know the topic of this paper. For example, it can be a physics paper, a biology paper, computer science paper, or economics paper. And here is how this can be done by just using a regular neural network. So from the paper content, we can extract its feature vector. In this case, we can use a bag of word approach. Basically, in this vector, each entry represents the appearance frequency of the words in this paper. And after that, we can fit this feature vector into our neural network. And then this network will output the probability distribution of the class of this paper. In this case, you can say physics has the highest probability. So we'll say this is a physics paper. So this approach actually has been proven to be very, works very well. But now the question is, can we further make improvement from this approach? Because if you look at it, we are actually not you fully utilizing all the information we have. We all know that uh, we also have this reference information and we know that the reference paper are very likely to be of the same topic of this paper. So how can we combine these two pieces of information together to further improve the accuracy of our model? So here comes the idea of GCN. So first, in order to combine this reference information, we need to represent this uh, relationship. And the first thing come to our mind is to use graph. So we will first build a citation graph. So here is just a simplica simplification of the schematic I just show you. And in this schematic, each node represents a paper. And this is the feature vector of that paper. And this is a neural net and the output. So as we say, we can use a graph to represent the citation relationship between the paper. So this is what it will be look like. So here basically is a citation graph and each edge represents the citation relationship. Now you can see even here, I'm only using a citation graph as, a, as an example, but you can see this is actually a very generic problem. So essentially you are given a graph and each node has its own feature and we want to do a uh, node classification using the label of those uh, using the label on those vertex to train a model and do the classification. Now let's see how GCN uh, address this problem. So GCN essentially combine the feature vector of each node and their graph feature to improve the accuracy of the prediction. And here is an example. So in this GCN model, we have one hidden layer in this neural net. And what's different from regular neural network is before we propagate the feature vector into our neural net, we will first compute the average feature vector among each node and its neighbor. And this is done by multiply this feature matrix by this uh, normalized adjacency matrix. 
So here we are essentially taking the average, a weight, weighted average, and the weight is de determined by the all degree of different nodes. So in this talk, I will call this propagation horizontal propagation. So basically we are propagating information along the edges. And after the horizontal propagation, we will have a vertical propagation that is propagate the information to the hidden layer in this case. So this is uh, the same as the forward propagation for any regular neural network. But you can see here now on my hidden layer, I already have the local feature of uh, each nodes in my graph combined with some feature from its neighbor. So that's the graph feature. And after this, if we have many layer of neural, uh, many layers in our neural net, we will just repeat the horizontal propagation and vertical propagation to uh, is eventually get to our output layer. And now you can see on my output layer, I will combine both the local feature and also some graph feature. And in this example, when we only have one hidden layer, in our output layer, we will combine the local feature together with our two hop neighbor. And this is actually how GCN include a graph feature to improve its prediction accuracy. So let's look at the pros and cons of GCN. So as you may already notice that this is actually a semi-supervised approach because not all the nodes in the graph need to be labeled. And the neural net can actually learn from the feature vector of a node as long as one of its n-hop neighbor is labeled and n depends on the number of layers you have in your neural net. And this property is actually good when your label is very sparse. And second, as we combined our local feature together with our graph feature, you can expect this approach will have better accuracy. However, there are still some catches for this approach. So unlike regular neural net, well, after the model is trained, now given a feature vector of a node, you can already feed this feature vector into your neural net and get your output. But when you are using a GCN, you can see the prediction not only depends on those weight matrix, it also depends on this adjacency matrix. So you do need to have this normalized adjacency matrix to make prediction. So why this is a problem? Because your graph size can be much larger than your, the size of your, of your neural net. For example, say if in your graph you have a hundred million of vertex in your graph and each uh, node may have say 1000 feature, features. So in this case, the size of your weight matrix may be in the order of thousands by thousands. However, the size of your adjacency matrix can be millions by millions and this can your adjacency matrix A can easily take terabytes of memory. So that's the first problem. Now, even we assume that you have a very big machine to store this adjacency matrix. Uh, when you have a lot of paper in your graph in this example, this is what's mostly like to happen. So you will first store your paper information in your database. So in your database, very likely you will have two tables. The first table is a paper content table. table. So you store your, uh, the content of your paper in this table. And you will also have a citation relation table. And here is where you store your citation relationships. And your database is also responsible for data update and data processing. Now say if you want to train a machine learning 
or want to train your GCN, you need to first export your data to a machine learning platform. You will need to first build your feature matrix X from the paper content table, and then load your data to this platform and then build your adjacency matrix A from this citation relationship table. And then you will train your model there. After the model is trained, you will also need to import your model back in your database to use them. So now you can expect as the size of your data get larger and larger, you will spend a lot of time just to export those data. And this actually prohibits you from real-time model update. So to summarize, there are mainly two issues with this uh, with the, the current method. First, so for a real-world application, when your graph size is very big, it will take a lot of memory to store. And also, in exporting the data from your database to a machine learning platform can take a lot of time. And now both of these issues can actually be solved by training your model inside your database. So here is the idea. So in this example, we can actually store our adjacency matrix in a graph database. As you know, this adjacency matrix is very likely to be a sparse matrix and it's actually more memory efficient to store a sparse matrix as a graph. And now since all the paper content are already in, the, in your graph database, you can easily retrieve them for model prediction and model training just by running queries in your database. And by doing this, as we mentioned, it will better support continuous model training over evolving data. And lastly, because your database is already a distributed parallel computing system, you can just take advantage of this framework and train your model distributedly. And now let's see more detail of how you can train your GCN in a graph database distributedly. So again, we will use this GCN model as an example. The first thing we need to do is just to load your data to your graph database to form this citation graph. So in this graph, the feature vector and the label will be stored as attribute on the vertex. And on the edge, you will have a weight as the attribute. And the weight is essentially the value of the entries in this normalized adjacency matrix. And now you also need to initialize uh, your weight matrix as a global variable that can be accessed by all the nodes in this graph. After that, the training flow will be very similar to any neural net. So you will have a forward propagation and backward propagation. So in your forward propagation, as we mentioned, we will do the horizontal propagation first. So in this step, basically you are asking each vertex to collect features from its neighbor and combine them together to form its averaged feature Z. So this is essentially each vertex sending message to its neighbor. And you can see there's no any dependency for this uh, each node sending its message on the other vertex. So basically this step can be done all in parallel and distributedly. So now after the each node received the feature from its neighbor, now you can combine them together to do the uh, vertical propagation and then to gather features on our hidden layer. So that's, it, that's doing this step. And now after you have all, uh, the feature on the hidden layer, you can just put that into a uh, activation function. In this case, we'll use a ReLU function to get the activation in the hidden layer sigma here. And once we have that, the following will be just repeating the first two steps. 
that is to do the horizontal and vertical propagation. So we will again ask each node to collect information from its neighbor. And then we will propagate that to the second weight matrix. And in the end, we will have our prediction Y on each node. So that's pretty much it for the forward propagation part. So now once we have all the prediction, we can compute the prediction arrow. Now we can combine all of those prediction arrow on those labeled node to compute the derivative of the, our weight matrix and then just use gradient descent to update our weight matrix and train our model. So I know here I actually left out a lot of details about the model training because I want to focus on, I don't want to talk too much about how GCN work, but I do want to spend some time to show you the demo where I trained uh, this model distributedly in Tiger Graph. So before that, let me actually give you a little bit more detail of our, the data set I use in this demo and the GCN model. So, the set, so here we are using a citation graph data set is from, you can find this from this reference. So in this citation graph, we have uh, 27 and eight, 2,708 nodes, these uh, many edges and seven classes of different, uh, seven different classes of topic for the paper. So the objective is to predict the class of paper. And as we mentioned, we'll use this bag of word feature vector and the dimension for the feature vector is 1433. And you can also find more information of the model from this Keep and Welling paper. And in this model, we will have 16 hidden feature and the train for the training data set will use 140. And you can see it's only like 5% of the total data size is used for training. And for the loss function, we'll use the softmax cross entropy with uh, logistic regression. And we'll use batch gradient descent and we'll use a drop hop regularization with 0.5% drop hop rate. And lastly, let me show you very quick what's the graph look like after we load the data into the database. So you can see on the left, this is basically your citation graph. And here, each paper will connect to the words in this paper. And uh, uh, word frequency will be stored on the edge between the paper and words. And you can have different words have the same, different paper have the same words. And those words will be connecting to our hidden layer and the hidden layer connecting to the output layer. So you can see this part of the neural net is actually shared by all the paper in this graph. Okay, now let me show you the demo. So as you can see, this is the schema we are using for the citation graph. So we have the paper connecting to words and then to the hidden layer and the output layer. And here is the query we can run to train this uh, GCN. So we will first do some initialization. So basically in this query, we just split our data into training and validation and testing data set. So after that, we can run this query to initialize our weight matrix using some random number generation. And now you can run this training query to train your uh, GCN. 
and you can see those the input for this query is your the learning rate and some hyperparameter for your atom optimization op, atom optimizer and the job hop rate and the regularization factor and the number of iteration you want to do So yeah, so the query is finished as you can see. The query will output the training loss and the validation loss. And here for each iteration, you will also output the accuracy on the testing data set. So you can see as we uh, training the data, the prediction accuracy keep increasing. And in the end here, we have 10 iteration and you can see the accuracy can reach to 70% at the end after 10 iteration. So now let's say after we are, if we are satisfied with this model, we can also run this predicting query. This will just use this GCN to predict the class of paper in this citation graph. So this is our citation graph. And you can see you can see on each node we have both the labeled data and the prediction shown here. And you can see here the prediction is actually the same as the label. And lastly, let me show you one more thing. So here actually my citation graph is stored in a two nodes cluster. So basically each node has 50% of the data. And you can see here is actually the CPU usage when I run the query. And this one, this chart is for M1, the first machine. And you can also see when I run the training data, I'm using both M1 and M2. So this is the CPU usage for the second machine. So I'm actually training our model distributedly in this two node cluster. cluster. Yep, so that's for the demo part. Now I will be uh, happy to take any questions you have.